Hello everybody. So I wanted to do a video today on uh, my results so far with overclocking the Intel i7-7700K. Um, I do want to say that this is not something I do as a professional. Uh, this isn't scripted or anything, so I hope I don't ramble too much and make some sense. And uh, as you can, or you might have heard already, there's also a bird in the background making noise. So hopefully that's not too annoying. Um, Basically, what I've been able to do is I did some testing with uh, the CPU with its factory boosted clock speed. So, um, like I did some benching with it going up to 4.5 gigahertz. I then overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz and uh, I'm currently sitting up around 5.0 gigahertz. Um, some things that I did want to mention is that um, <clears throat> I have the Asus. Maximus 9 Hero motherboard, and this motherboard does come with preloaded overclocking profiles. The 5.0 gigahertz uh, preloaded profile has a voltage, or well, it sits with auto. Every pretty much everything's on auto, really. Just uh, they've set the multiplier to 50, and then there's some other settings they've done, but. Um, Basically, what I saw when using that profile was the V core would go up above 1.4 volts, which resulted in some pretty high temperatures. Uh, I did actually have um, on this computer prior to changing coolers, I had the Noctua NHD 15. And with that preloaded overclocking profile, the computer basically hit 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, like it was like 98 degrees Celsius. So basically within degrees of the thermal max um, that's listed by Intel anyways. Um, so unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to use that cooler uh, with my own vCore setting, which I currently have at 1.38. So you'll see it kind of hop between 1.36 and 1.38, which uh, has some pretty stable temps. Like if I pull up hardware info monitor, can see right now um it does jump around a bit i don't know uh what what exactly that's from from what i could find online that, that's pretty normal i guess for this chip at least a lot of other people are having this problem um i've checked to make sure the cooler's seated properly and that there's enough thermal compound and everything and everything's fine it just seems to be that's what happens um but as you can see um, with 1.38, the max so far has been 66 degrees Celsius, and it's averaging around 39 degrees Celsius. So not too bad. That's pretty much what I see for my general use anyways. It doesn't seem to go much beyond 66 degrees Celsius. Um, so I do recommend if you're going to overclock to make sure that you manually set your vCore and uh, don't let it auto because it'll it'll get really hot. Um, so the second profile is the uh, 4.8 gigahertz profile. They call it like their gaming profile. Um, when I used that preloaded profile, my computer never actually went above 4.6 gigahertz. Um, so I'm not too sure what that's all about. I ended up doing my own manual profiles for both anyways, but it's still a pretty nice feature, uh, especially the five gigahertz one. What you could do is load up the preloaded five gigahertz one or profile and then manually set your v core and then that should basically run fine so to kind of go over what i saw between my different benching scores um, i'll go over the charts that i did just because they're a little easier to read um so i guess i'll go in order with how i did them so for real bench i did Basically, for my overclocking, I did Prime 95 for a torture test. Um, short period. I, I've heard not to run Prime 95 on modern CPUs for a long time, especially the torture test. You can run the benching, but from what I saw online, people are recommending not to run the torture test for a long time. Um, so I, I kind of just did that. And then basically, I saw up until about when a temperature would sort of plateau like it would spike to a high point and then plateau at that temperature sort of how i judge my maximums or max temps um then i also used real bench and ada 64 
and then the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. Uh, so I have all my results from ADA64 and RealBench. So for the in image editing score, as you can see, uh, quite a jump between each level or each uh, clock speed, considering they're they're not really that far apart. Uh, I just got to be careful here because another thing I saw was basically to not trust the OpenCL score. Um, this also relies heavily on your GPU. So I'm using the EVGA GeForce GTX 1070, uh, the super clocked GPU right now. Um, so I'll leave that one out just because it, this is, this review is mainly for the CPU, not my, my GPU. So, um, for video encoding, as you can see, um, this is not much of a change really. If you think about it, like two, two seconds and then two seconds again pretty much um just want to make sure i didn't do the same thing yeah so actually if you look at the image editing score um again it's it's about like one second pretty much one second for each thing like i mean we're under 21 both times here just the decimal value that's different and then slightly above 22 seconds here um so then for the multitasking again a uh, big jump between the factory boost speed and 4.8 but then not much between 4.8 and 5.0 and then the overall system score which is this is typically what you see when you look at like the real bench scores is this value here so as you can see it's a pretty big jump when you're going from the uh, factory boost up to 5.0 gigahertz and um, for ADA again um, what I'll have in the description is basically information on what each of these tests are I'm not going to go into detail for each one but as you can see um, it's it's pretty consistent the more overclock the better the score is except for photo works for some reason um, the factory boost was uh the highest and again like it's not much we're looking at a difference between 83 or 20 20,683 and 20,871 um megapixels per second so actually I'll take that back that is a pretty decent change um but I don't know what happened there and uh yeah, the rest are all pretty consistent when you look at the rate at which overclocking factors into this or into the overall performance of the CPU. I will say that during gaming, I am not noticing much of a difference, and that's mainly because um, I do 1080p gaming. I don't have a 1440p or higher monitor. I still have a 1080 monitor um, at 144 hertz. Um, so I'm noticing that the CPU will barely be used. Like I'm talking usually C30 to at the most 60% utilization, but the GPU will be absolutely pegged or at like 99% usage. So it's, it's being almost bottlenecked. I mean, I, I guess that is, that is a bottleneck. Um, but I mean, things still look good. I'm seeing anywhere depending on the game. It's always 60 FPS plus, generally 70 to 100 plus, depending on the game. Um, so yeah, the overclocking didn't really make a ton of difference in gaming, but most of these tests are for things like, as you can see, compression, uh, photo editing, encoding, those sorts of things. So um, you may or may not need to overclock this for gaming, um, but it's still fun to do, and I mean, it's a K-series chip, so why not? Um, the last thing is the temps. So as you can see, I, I do have my scores at at 5 gigs, five gigahertz using air. As you can see, it went all the way up to 98 degrees Celsius, um, idled around 69, and then low of 33. Uh, right now, this is where I'm at, where 
Um, when I did my torture test, it went all the way up to 86. But the good thing about a torture test is that you'll never see your CPU go that high just from general usage. So that is something to consider. Like I said, the max I usually see doing gaming or even doing like handbrake um, video compression is like 71, 72 degrees Celsius. Um, average is around 42 and low of 32. Not much different between the 4.8 and 5.0 gigahertz. In fact, this pretty much is what I see now with general use. Um, obviously, the torture test was a little higher on 4.8 gigahertz. So its general high is probably actually somewhere more around 60, maybe even high 50. And then 4.5 is the... Uh, pretty low so I don't know if I said but when I upgraded my cooler I upgraded to a Corsair H115i so it is a liquid cooler with a 280 millimeter radiator um, if you weren't going to overclock this is a exceptional cooler for the CPU with overclocking it's still really good uh, a huge issue for the temps here is what your voltage or your vCore is so like I said, don't go above 1.4 or you'll see really high temps. And another thing is um, the TIM that Intel used on this CPU. So I don't know if I'm going to risk delitting this CPU just to get a uh, slightly cooler temps. Um, from what I've heard anyways, delitting can reduce the temps by about 20 degrees Celsius. Well, that's delitting and uh, replacing the TIM provided by Intel with a liquid metal um, version, basically. So, uh, yeah, that, that'll reduce the temps quite a bit. But again, this, this is a pretty expensive CPU, at least in Canada. So I'm not going to be basically cracking it open to do that, just to reduce temps. I'm, I'm okay with these right now. Um, that's pretty much it. Like I said, I'll have a more detailed... Uh, description of the tests and what their purpose is in the in the description of this video as well as links to the tools I use in case you want to give it a shot yourself but the prime reason why I wanted to do this video was that this chip is pretty new the motherboard I have is pretty new and I kind of wanted to provide at least some overview of what you'll see with uh, with this hardware so Feel free to leave any corrections in the comments below. Like I said, I'm not a professional, but I'm always open to learning more. Or at least having, I can put a note in the video to, with the, the correct information. So, as always, I hope this video was helpful, and thanks for watching.